Hey there, and welcome to another episode of One Email, Two Takes. I'm Will Allred. I'm joined here with Christina Finsath. This week, we have got a doozy of a personalized email to go through. If you're not familiar with the show, this is the weekly Sales Hacker Show where Christina and I take emails that are either submitted to us for feedback or you know, people ask us uh, or just send it to us, right? Um, and we offer our take, our perspectives on the email, but also our two takes on how we individually would rewrite that email. And so uh, who are we to tell you about cold email? I'm Will Allred. I'm one of the co-founders at a company called Lavender. We help thousands of sales reps uh, write better emails and we help them do it faster through our Chrome extension. So I've got a bunch of fun data points that I get to bring into the conversation from the millions of emails that we see every month. And then Christina, who's one of our advisors at Lavender. I'll let her introduce herself, of course. Yes, obviously I'm an advisor to Lavender and love working with Will and the team. Um, but I also own Outbound Growth Marketing for a company called Greenhouse. Um, I also put out a course called the Outbound Fire Framework a couple of years ago. Um, and email is literally my bread and butter. Um, I love it. If I could only do one type of sales outreach, it would be email forever. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got an inbox. <laughs> Everybody's got an inbox. Don't have to worry about numbers that are incorrect. But anyway. Oh, all right. I will share my screen and we can go through this week's email. So um, can you see it on my end? I can. And um, I'm so excited about this episode. Will and I actually discovered after we both did our rewrites that we have a very cohesive episode today, and you'll see what I mean <laughs> in a moment. Um, for those who are familiar with the Outbound Fire Framework, it's a very specific way of using personalization to reach out to people. But let me read this email that I got. The subject line was literally where I had my master's program, <laughs> Keller Graduate School of Management of DeFry University, which is like a mouthful. Um, hope you're having an awesome day, Christina. Amazed to learn that you studied at Keller Graduate School of Management of DeVry University. That's impressive. Are you currently using LinkedIn to generate leads for your clients? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't even read it because I just saw your face, Will. Um, or planning to. Uh, if so, you'll want to know about a top 100 U.S.-based lead generation agency recently featured on NPR using 185 LinkedIn avatars. They generated 500 plus sales qualified leads in less than 90 days for a publicly traded company, leading to over 2.3 million in net new revenue. I know this is merely a skimming of details. Would you prefer I send some more information to an amazing Wednesday? And before you even jump in, Will, because I know you're going to like slice and dice this, I will tell you the one thing that I really liked, even though it was like a hope you are well type of feel, is mm -hmm. that they didn't start with like, Hey, Christina. Hi, Christina. Oh, yeah. They kind of like played with that a little bit and put it at the end of their first sentence. But I will tell you that the transition is like eek and the relevance is worse. And I almost wanted to reply back and be like, are you a LinkedIn avatar right now? Are you a real <laughs> person or are you an avatar? Um, but I did. The avatars are taking over. As... The avatars are taking <laughs> over. Forget AI. <laughs> I also just like that, like, I kind of read this the first time and I'm like, wait, NPR is now ranking US-based lead generation agencies? What's happening? Yeah, I was a little confused about that too. And now I got to look into that. I didn't actually uh, fact check that. Yeah. Could just be BS, but I'm just like picturing uh, Kai Rizdal <laughs> marketplace. <laughs> All right, we have the updated numbers on <laughs> top U hundred. <laughs> it also just reminds me of like uh, you know, when people uh cheat the system to get more followers on like Twitter or something. Yeah. This feels oddly the same way, and I feel like anyone who might entertain it might. I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm I'm all for trying new things, but it makes me feel a little. But this is an example of a, I, now I don't know this for certain, but I've seen products out there in the market that quote, automate personalization, personalizers at scale, and they snag things from your LinkedIn profile and they turn them into starting statements. And the idea is like, you know, get the open and then you can throw your pitch in there. Wow. And problem is like, you run into weird cohesive 
not not so cohesive messages like this um because it's like that's impressive anyways (laughs) and then like I I see stuff like that all the time and the problem is it's not like what actual personalization means it's personalized but it's not relevant which I think was your whole point for bringing this in yeah and then you know on top of that just the length and I know there's data that says asking two questions um, definitely diminishes some of your reply rates. So indeed, actually, yeah. But to your point, I don't mind like the hope you're having an awesome day, Christina. It's friendly and like happy, friendly, warm tones do yep. really well for a driving response. Um, so yeah, data points on subject line, it's too long. Um, data points on the email as a whole, it's too long. Um <laughs> But, you know, to to an amazing Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. And you know what would have been maybe less of like a clear indicator to someone who is well versed in email and personalization tokens mm-hmm. would be if they just said Keller Graduate School. Right. Like versus <laughs> the full like formal name of it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a giveaway here that. ah. Uh, well, and you can you can set that up too, right? I've done this with campaigns for folks before where like the, it was a real estate group. And what I did was they gave me an Excel spreadsheet and I just broke out the street name into like the street name proper. And so now I had a field of variables that were quote softened. That's what I described them yeah. as. Um, and so they didn't feel like they can like came out of the spam cannon. Yep, that's the way to go. Versus being like, hey, I see you live near Bond Street Northeast, (laughs) you know? Um, It's like nobody would ever say that. Um, Do you think we beat this up enough? I do. Okay. (laughs) I I can't wait. This is like Feisty Friday is what I call it. Feisty Fridays. We're we're taking down emails. (laughs) Um, And so I decided to play on the hop on fire framework here uh and i just called the subject line one email two takes episode which would get my attention by Mm -hmm. the way in case you're planning on prospecting me use that subject line Mm -hmm. christina came across a recent episode of one email two takes about using personalization and relevance in email outreach thought i'd reach out you said personalization doesn't always have to be tied to relevance but you can't just use any point of personalization and get the same results. This really hit home for me. I know cold email is your game, but curious, how do you currently incorporate LinkedIn into your outreach strategy? Cheers, whoever. Uh, And this is really just to generate a conversation starter, right? I haven't even spilled the beans that I have all these avatars waiting to be used. It's just, I want to know is first and foremost, like, are you using LinkedIn in your outreach strategy? That would be a great starting point. Yeah. Yeah. Before you unleash the avatars. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sensing a movie, a movie <laughs> idea. <laughs> oh, no. You already know I love this. It's, they got the up care. This really hits home for me. You've got a direct quote. You know, it's got the context of like, hey, I came across this, made me want to reach out. Like, you're literally saying, this is what made me want to reach out. You're giving specific context and then you know just this alone that context whatever you ask is probably going to get a response because it's like oh yeah do you like carrots in your salad and you'd be like i don't know at least it was for me <laughs> well and listen even if i wrote back and just said yes great you know what to say back now now you can go a little deeper with why you wanted to know the answer to that question right and where that fits yes. in but or I could say no, and then you could be like, well, have you considered blah, 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 yeah. right? So why? <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is the, the direction I took it, but I'm curious to see your rewrite, which uh, I already saw. I know. I know. I know. I but again. what's great is you use the fire framework, and then I immediately brought up the fire framework. Um, and so I just went with LinkedIn fire. And so I capitalized fire with the intent so that you would see at least that it's like clearly like I'm talking about the fire framework, not just like <laughs> it's hot thing on LinkedIn. Um, and so start with read up on your fire framework, Christina, different take on just, you know, a greeting, but trying to merge the greeting with an observation, curious, 
have you seen it work on LinkedIn too? Conversation starter. And then some context as to why I'm asking. We have a LinkedIn outreach team that you could use to spin up and test messaging. If you and Greenhouse would be open to it, let's connect, right? You're reaching out to a large organization. And so I want to also like throw that concept like of, yeah, hey, this might not be something your org might even let you do. So just want to like throw that out there. Yeah, I love this. And I love the structure and like the aesthetic and the feel of the way that it's like, you know, the first sentence is shorter. It's kind of like a pyramid effect in a way. Yeah. Uh, if you centered it, it would be like a Christmas tree or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, um, Christmas tree. <laughs> too early for Christmas trees. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. I just like the way that you've used the space. And I like how the question is kind of baked in the middle. And you still took that same principle that I've seen you start using recently in some of your, your rewrites and outreach of like, the pattern interrupt of putting like the first name personalization at the end of the first sentence or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I really yeah. like that. I got it from Charlotte Johnson. I was like, that's really smart. That's a great idea. Oh, Charlotte. <laughs> I even think like in these cases, you could even see, say something like, um, and I, I want to see more people play around with this. In fact, I'll probably bring it to our SDR team, but right up on your fire framework. Curious, Christina. Have you seen it work on LinkedIn too? Mm -hmm. like, you There's no totally rule that says you have to that. start with their name. I don't know why like <laughs> we've stuck with that. We just have because people are quasi-traditional, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Just because it's the way it's always been done doesn't mean it has to always be that way. There's, there's no rules where we're going. <laughs> no rules on this road. Um, um, anyway, yep. I told you it's Feisty Friday, but yeah, I really love this. It's short. It's simple. It's effective. It's different. This is this is how I, yeah, I could be a bump that you just use to follow up on yours. <laughs> Boom. There you go. You've got a two-part cadence. Now two you can uh, the take it into something else, but... All right. They, they use the fire framework on you in email one, and then they reference the fire framework in email two. Christina's like, oh man. <laughs> it's like a pipe dream for me over here. Thanks for all the fire framework plugs. Um, but yeah, I guess that wraps like episode like close to 40 now. I think uh, we're almost at 40. We should do something really special, like have confetti or something for episode 40. But um, thanks for tuning in. If you want to know how you get this, sales hackers youtube channel you mm -hmm. can always go there um but the easiest way is to sign up for the sales hacker newsletter and get it right in your inbox every tuesday with a whole lot of other resources and great information so indeed and you can also up. find us on the video section on the sales hacker website all sorts of ways you can find these but yep thanks. or you can ping us directly and say hey where's the latest episode yeah and if you have an email that you want us to review send it to me. My email address is will.allred at lavender.ai. So shoot it my way. Boom. Awesome. See ya.